What's up everybody? Well, I figured I would go ahead and do another tying tutorial. This one is going to be my magic school bus. Now this pattern is totally awesome. Rainbow, brown trout. Haven't had a chance to fish for bass or anything else, but when it comes to rainbow and browns, this is one of the ones that I personally love. It has been crushed ever since I tied it up and invented it, and it has never changed out of the vise. Now, I use a specific material. It's a little bit more difficult to get your hands on, and you do got to pick through it because it's not as good on the consistency factor. So I'm going to use my material, but I recommend that if you're going to tie this, either get brown saddle hackle or get tan saddle hackle. Me personally, I use chinchilla, okay? And as you can see, there is some different variations in it. Some of the other material you're going to need is your woolly bugger marabou in brown okay a lot of people don't use woolly bugger for streamers i did and the main reason why i did is because blood quill really didn't give me the static that i wanted woolly bugger is a little bit more bulky and it has a little bit more kick to the tail as far as your joining for your articulation i used orange beads on this one and i used two of them you're going to want to get some gold brassy wire for your counter rib. You're also going to want to get some yellow saddle hackle. And then you only need like six inches of articulation wire. I'm using the standard surf line. And then you're going to need for dubbing on the body, you're going to want to get the ice dub UV gray. Okay. Now, when it comes to the eyes, I prefer the tungsten small dumbbell eyes, okay? It's got a lot of weight to them for such a small eye. That's just kind of what I went with. As far as hooks, your back hook is going to be the Gamakatsu B10S Stinger in a size 6. And your front hook is going to be the Gamakatsu B10S Stinger in a size 4, okay? Now, there are no rubber legs on this fly. There are no flash on this fly. There's nothing to it. It's just standard material. The last piece of material you're going to need is your yellow deer hair. So I'm going to go ahead and get started spinning this up. And like I said, I'm still working on getting rid of that spool of white GSP. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that. Now, Gamakatsu hooks are a little bit different when it comes to tying up material on them because a lot of people will tell you that you've got to stop right where the point of the hook is. Now, me personally, I go all the way back pretty much to where the barb is, so it'll be right on that bend, and that's where I start tying in my material right on the barb of the hook. And what you're going to want to get is you're going to want to get one of those really, really wispy looking woolly bugger marabou tails. You've also got to make sure that it's got quite a bit of flexibility to it, okay? Now, with the woolly bugger marabou, there is a trick to how I tie this in. I grab the tip just like that, and I fold all this back, and I determine what my tail length is going to be based off of that. And then I tie it in. So there it is right there. So that's what I'm going with for tail length on this particular fly. I get two wraps around it. And then I grab my entire feather and I pull it all the way back. And I advance up the hook. Make sure you do your half hitch because like I said with my disco stew tying video, GSP will back off on you every single time. You give it a chance to, it's going to back off on you. Now, with the Wooly Bugger Marabou, I palmer it. Okay, so I go ahead and give it those wraps, pulling all my fibers back on the feather as I wrap it. And this is why you need that very flexible stem. Now, 
Now, this is a longer piece of Wooly Bugger Marabou than what I would normally use, but that's totally fine. It'll still do the same thing. It's going to act a little bit more like Blood Quill, but that's totally fine. Try not to trap any of the feather fibers. The less you can trap, the better the tail is going to work for you. You can go back over it. You don't have to go forward on the hook. You can basically just wrap it right on top of itself. And you take up as much of the feather as possible. So right about there. I like the way that looks. Go ahead and capture that feather just like that. And then snip that off. Brush all this back with your fingers. And then this is where I actually go back and I bury it. Make sure your vise is adjusted accordingly for tension. These gamakatsu hooks do have a tendency to want to shift in your vise just a little bit. So be mindful of that. So I'll go all the way back, burying all that material to the point of the hook right there. And then I'll just go ahead and stop. Go ahead and get your gold brassy wire. And tie that in. And this is literally for your counter rib. You don't have to do a counter rib. You can tie these in tips first and then run them forward after you do your dubbing loop. The counter rib is something that I actually added after the fact later on down the line. It wasn't something that I did right off the bat. I mostly did it just to kind of add a little bit more of the fluff to the feather instead of tying from the tips. So now create your dubbing loop. I give it those two wraps around my thread so that when I go to set this, you can see I can set it and lock it back in the back where I want my dubbing loop to start. So I'm going to go ahead and advance that forward almost to the eye of the hook. And then I'm going to give it the half hitch just to lock it in place. Now with this UV gray, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just kind of grab what you need, kind of like that. And you don't need to really pull these fibers that much to stack them or nothing. You just pretty much get them in your dubbing loop. There's no fluff to this body whatsoever. This is a really tight spun body. There's absolutely no taper to this particular dubbing loop. It's just pretty much get it in there and get it spun up. It's mostly just to kind of give that little flash of color in the fly. And that's it. Make sure you spin this one pretty tight like that and then go ahead and wrap it forward. If you end up with a little extra dubbing, not really that big of a deal.
They seem to have a lot of flies around. We live in Montana, so there's a lot of cattle, a lot of horses and stuff like that. So every once in a while, you end up with a lot of flies in the area. They get really annoying sometimes. But go ahead and hack that off just like that. And I'll save that dubbing for later. Now, what I do with this is I take my yellow and I pull just that little bit of fluff right there and then I'll strip the rest of this off. Like I said, a lot of flies these days. Sorry about that, they're a little irritating. I'll try to ignore them during this video though. So, you grab it, do your figure eight around it, just like that, give it a good pull. And then I go one more just in front of it and then I'll do the same thing with the chinchilla there's not much fluff I keep on the chinchilla so there's that I'm gonna tie this in in front of the yellow the same way go between the yellow and then chinchilla Do your figure eight around your feather, just like that. Give it a good pull, and then go ahead and do your couple turns in front of it, just like that. And then half hitch it to lock that thread in. And then grab these just like this and go ahead and spin them on just like that grab your counter rib wire bring it around and then grab your feather just like that so that it's nice and locked in and then proceed to the front with your counter rib just like that Go ahead and grab your wire and helicopter it off. Go ahead and give it a couple of really good turns. And then whip finish and you're done with the back hook. It's just that simple. And you can give this one a double if you want. Just like that. Go ahead and hack that off. Come in and clip. Now, if you really want more of the red in it, because it's red chinchilla that I used, go ahead and tie them in from the tips. It's really not going to make that big of a difference. This had a bigger tail, so I figured with the bigger tail, I'll just do the bigger wraps and call it good. That's basically what the back of it looks like. So you're going to grab your B10S number four. And then, like I said, these are the tungsten cased dumbbell eyes. I like to get the ones that have the little V in them. They have them looking like an actual dumbbell, and then they have the ones that have the V. I like the ones with the V because it, cent it centers them automatically on the hook. So, 
same thing as the other ones do your three come up and then flip it and then come down now the reason I go up is because it ensures that you still have that third wrap in and then do your figure underneath give it a good pull and then wrap it they don't really move that much once you do that so you're pretty much good to go And then you go ahead and add your back hook to it. Give that a pull so that it puts a little kink in the wire. And then double check to make sure, like I said in my other video, you want to make sure that your wire is even so that your back hook does not follow the twist of the wire and want to twist the back hook i'm tying these onto the side facing me and then same thing give it that pull let me go a little bit farther back i personally go about halfway to the barb of the hook from the point of the hook you give it that little pull and you make sure it's got that one bead length in the back just like that and that go that is pretty much all you want because you want this to be able to move as freely as possible with this fly the more this tail can slam around back there the better and like I said with my other one these hair clips are your best friend with this one, you can just go ahead and grab the tail and lock it on the vise. Grab one that's a little too big. Get different sizes too, depending on the size of streamers that you tie. So there's that. That's locked in. It's not going to go anywhere now, so I'm good to go with that. So go ahead and wrap this forward just like you would with any normal one and it's the same thing as the disco stew if the ring eye isn't big enough do the same thing with the joint wire wrap all the way up as tight as you can behind the dumbbell eyes just like that and then grab this wire and bring it down splitting it around the eye of the hook on either side of the dumbbell eyes and then bring it back up so you can go ahead and pull and then give it that really good wrap and pull just like that give it a couple more wraps and then do your three and give that a pull and that's going to lock it in place it's not going to go anywhere different scissors don't forget that Anytime you cut articulation wire, you definitely want different scissors. Otherwise, it's going to ruin your fly tying scissors. Okay, so now when it comes to back here, you're going to want another really small piece. Very flexible because all the woolly bugger in this fly is palmered in. Okay? And I tie this one in the exact same way. I set this on top just like that. I try to grab the farthest point of the stem as possible down the tip of the feather so that the joint cover is not that long. Just like that. Tie that in. And then go ahead and pull all this feather back and advance forward. And then you're going to palmer this one just the same.
That's literally should be all that I need. Right there. You don't want it wrapped up too thick because you still want the back of the fly to move around. So don't try to bury it too much. Just do it a little bit. Go ahead and snip off that excess. Get that out of your way. And then wrap back over it so that you can secure this material from a fish's tooth or anything like that getting in there. Any of the fibers pulling out, anything like that. Right there. So this is one of those situations where I say you can go ahead and you can use a rubber band to go to the back of the hook from one of these clips because sometimes your fly isn't big enough. So I'm going to tie in some more counter rib wire. Just like that. And then I'm going to build my dubbing loop. If your material gets in the way, wet your fingers and sweep it back just like that. Go almost all the way up to the eyes on this one because there are no rubber legs and there is no other material you need to be tying in except for your hackle feathers. So it's safe to go all the way up behind the eyes on this one. And it's the same thing as the back hook. You're not trying to build a massive dubbing loop. You just want enough to give it that little shimmer within the body underneath the feathers because this is another one of those flies that kind of opens up as you're fishing it it'll stall out and it'll open up just a little bit letting that little bit of color of the body show through Just like that. Capture it, throw your couple of wraps in front of it, give it a good pull, and then hack off the rest of that. Go ahead and grab your yellow hackle feather. And I always strip those off to make it easier to tie in. But same thing. Go over it. Come back, grab it, and then your two wraps in front of it. Give it a good pull to lock it in. Go ahead and grab your chinchilla feather or your brown or tan saddle hackle. The color is really up to you. This was the first hackle that I had used when I had originally tied this fly was the red chinchilla. 
And for me personally, I really love the way it looks. I did notice a difference in the eat, believe it or not, when I was using the chinchilla feather versus the brown or tan saddle hackles. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give that a good berry and I'm gonna go up in front and put a half hitch in. I'm not gonna worry about figure eighting that one. It does get a little hard to figure eight these hackles when you're behind dumbbell eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab these and I'm gonna turn this back. Now, if you've got one of these tools right here, they really do come in handy. They make it a lot easier to be able to do your saddle hackles. Especially when you're getting into the very tips of the feathers like I am right now. So if I get one more good turn. All right, just like that. I'm going to grab my counter rib wire. And I'm going to come around and I'm going to secure those feathers just like that. And then I'm going to wrap forward all the way up to behind the eyes. And then go ahead and capture that wire just like that. Go ahead and grab what you can of that. Break the rest of this wire off. Pull all that material back. Give it a couple more wraps. Give it a pull and you can call it good. Go in here, clip off the tips of your remaining feathers. Just like that. And then you're going to add your yellow deer hair. Now this only has a deer hair collar and then a deer hair spun head. And the head is really, really tricky the way I had it designed. So I'll walk you through it. Make sure your deer hair is as straight as possible when building your collars. Because the deer hair does in fact manipulate the fly significantly on whether it's going to swim straight or not. So usually what I'll do is I'll cut a significant clump about like that. If you have one of these medium swinger stackers from the slide in, you basically you want to fill that stacker and that's the collar on this fly. So go ahead and pick through this. If you don't know how to clean deer hair, get yourself a comb. They work really, really well. Kind of like, you know, combing your hair in a way. You want to get all the fluff out of it because then it makes it easier to tie in and it locks in better. Basically all this stuff, all your under fur and you know, guard hairs and stuff like that. You wanna get all that out of the way. Clean your deer hair really, really well when you're building this fly. Mostly for the collars. Go ahead and fill that stacker up. Give it a couple of good taps. And there you go. It's nice and stacked. So once you stack deer hair, don't let off that pinch. The tighter you're pinching, the safer you are to maintain the deer hair being straight. So for this collar, I go back to about the, sh the point of the hook down here is where I usually like the top of my collar to stop. So give it a really good pinch. Cut off all your excess. Nice and straight like that. And then give your thread a counterclockwise spin. And the reason you do that, if you're unfamiliar with tying in things, you do the counterclockwise spin because when you go to turn, 
your thread lays over your material. So I come in just like this, just like that, give it that really good pull, come over it a second time, and I'm pinching the hook really well so that the deer hair doesn't try to slide around the side of the hook. Give it a really good pull, really good pull, okay? And then you can let it go, just like that, okay? Now, before I do anything else, I come in and I really come over this a lot, a whole lot. I always pinch around the side of the hook to make sure none of the deer hair tries to migrate around the side of the hook. Give it really good pulls, and this is why I use GSP, because the GSP that I use, you can really yank on it. I mean, look at how much I'm pulling on that. I pull twice as hard as that when I'm setting this collar. I look at it, make sure it's not going around the hook anywhere. Give it that one more. And then what I like to do is I like to push just a tiny bit like you are with most other collars that you build. And then that's it. It's set pretty solid. Once you do this collar, you can never tighten that collar down too much. So then, here's what separates my fly from a lot of other flies, aside from no rubber legs, no flash, no nothing. Wooly bugger marabou. Now this is the part, this is what's key to this fly's construction. I take it and I lay it right over the top, just like that. And I'll come in and I'll do that one turn and I'll give it a good pull. Because what I'm going for is that right there. Okay. And this is the wing that I added over the collar of the fly. Come in one underneath it. Give it the pull to lock it. And then come in and snip that off as close as you can. Okay. And if one looks good, then one looks good. Now, I do want this wing to go, if you notice, this wing goes just into the back, okay? So you want it to go lay and cover over the entire body material of the front half of the hook. I did use two of these just so that it has that really, really big front to the fly. It helps stall out really well. So... Just give that a little pull. And one thing you gotta take, keep in mind when you're building this fly. If you have to, wet it. Wet it so you can slick all the fibers of the hair back. And then you'll be able to grab this. You can see the size length that I've got. You see where it goes into the fly just like that. And I'm going to lay that right on top, just like this. And I'm going to tie it in. Just like that. Go ahead and give it a good pull. Do your two wraps in front of it. Cinch it down. And then cut off the excess. Just like that. And there's the wing of the fly. See? It's got this really crazy looking, just kind of like mohawk spike coming off the top of the fly. Come right in front of it, and then go ahead and cut your some more deer hair. Now you're going to spin this head, so you don't really need to stack it, you just need to clean it. Get a decent amount, about, about the same as what you got the first time. And like I said, your pinches absolutely matter. Make sure you get rid of all your long stragglers. Pinching deer hair to set is what makes or breaks the fly you're tying. 
if you can't pinch and you can't hold a good pinch pressure on it your deer hair has a tendency to run all over the place so same thing on this I'm gonna spin my thread counterclockwise quite a bit make sure you grab this so that you're at the same pinch point you were at for your collar okay lay it down in front and come over it pinch in between your fingers cinch it down come up one more time do it again and then go one third time and then grab it and give it a good pull so it spins in place just like that spinning deer hair takes a while okay so just practice it I'm still not a pro at it but go ahead and give it that really good make sure it's not moving anymore and then find the eye of your hook if you have to give this a little push back it's not going to make too much of a difference because when you go to shape this head you're going to cut most of the deer hair out anyway so there's that I got the eye on my hook right there sweep the deer hair back the best you can give your thread a little bit of a wiggle if you have to and try to just get it out to the front of the hook the best you can it's not always going to work for you the good news about GSP is you can give it that little pull and it'll help pull that material back a little bit okay now as for the whip finish there's nothing special on this you don't need to whip finish in front of the eye you just basically need to get a decent whip finish in so I'm gonna see if I have enough room if I have enough room to whip finish in front of all of the deer hair I will if not I'm not even gonna worry about it nope so I'm just gonna whip finish through the deer hair it's not really that big of a deal give it a couple really good ones move it back a little bit as you do it give it that pull and then give it that really good cinch just like that make sure it's nice and tight and I mean really like if I wasn't holding that hook I'd probably snap it in the vise So go ahead and cut that GSP off. And now this is where it gets tricky on the head, okay? Come in right here at the bottom of the eyes, okay? Run all your deer hair forward, just like that. Bring it all forward. Now come in right at the bottom of the eyes and just cut that right off, just like that, okay? So, you want to get rid of as much of the deer hair on this fly as possible. Come straight up. And I mean, if you have to, you can snip it little by little by little. And that's actually what I'm going to do right now. So, before I do that, I'm going to make sure my tail's locked. I'm going to come in with a smaller hair clip and I'm going to grab this wing if I don't lose the clip I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab that wing and I'm going to pull it out of the way and now I'm just going to go ahead and start shaping this head the way I want it always work from the front of the hook okay when you're doing these because you don't want to come in from behind it and cut half your collar off
Now, if you've got a couple of stragglers, that's fine. Okay, that's totally fine. So when it comes to shaping this head, there is an art form to shaping this head. The reason that I come in and I grab that is so that you can see on the top of the fly, you see how that wing is exposed. You want to keep that exposure so that you know where to stop with your cuts when it comes to shaping the, the head on this thing. Because it's too easy to cut into the collar material if you're not paying attention to something like that. But you want that exposed. Now, this is not a sex dungeon style head. This is a more of a drunken, disorderly style head. So you're going to find the eye of your hook. And you're going to come up. And you're basically going to shape the head like a cone. You're going to shape it this way. And you're going to shape it that way. All starting from the eye of the hook. To the eyes of the fly. If you need to get some sharper point scissors these ones happen to be the ones from rising they work pretty well and just snip right off by the eye so that you're flat just like that and then come in with the rest of your scissors and finish building that cone. Trimming deer hair takes a while. Then once you have that all done, you're pretty much good to go. And you should have that little cone style head to your fly. If you want, you can come in with a Wilkerson sword blade and hack it off. But sometimes it doesn't really matter. Right up here, you want to make sure that you still have a little bit of deer hair going over the marabou but not a ton of marabou going over the deer hair. And then once you're happy with the way the head of the fly looks, go ahead and take a really good look at it. Make sure that it's exactly the way you want it. This one right here looks pretty good to me. And as you can see, I'm gonna grab this tail real quick so I can rotate it for you. As you can see, it has a little bit longer of a tail than what I was going for, but for the sake of the tying video, you can see what I'm getting at. Inside, the body is all exposed. It's all exposed on the bottom. So all this marabou will lay down and then it'll open up a little bit and it'll lay down. It's designed as a type of suspension bait. So it works really, really good. I fish it on sink lines, which is why I don't tie any weight into the fly. So anyway, there it is right there. That's the magic school bus. And like I said, rainbow trout, brown trout, they go absolutely crazy for it. Brown seem to love to devour this thing. So go ahead and tie it up. If you got any questions, drop them in the comments down below. 
Leave a like on the video if you liked anything about it. Don't forget to hit your subscribe button and share it with a friend. After that, I hope you guys have some good fishing. Don't forget your notification bell. I'll see you guys later.